gang. Welcome back to another episode of Brooklyn Pony. This is part 32 in the series. If this is video number 32, obviously there's 31 other videos in the series. If you're new to the channel, I suggest you go back and check out the other videos on this car. And if you've been following along for quite some time, you already know the status and what all is going on with this particular Mustang. In a previous video, I showed how I worked on the fender to door to quarter panel transition and I've gotten some great feedback on that and I appreciate that and in that video I did a kind of a, a teaser video of the front of the uh, fender. I'm going to be working on making the extensions or the fender fit the extension whichever way I need to go and so that's what this video is going to be about. Now I'm going to probably do more than just that because the extensions is one thing, but there's also interaction with all of the front pieces. The headlight, buckets, or whatever you want to call them. You know, some people say doors and different things. But basically the headlight, the housing assembly, and how it interacts with the rest of the car. Also how the hood interacts with these extensions. Because if you look at other cars, you'll see the transitions usually aren't very good there would be a gap or offset between the extension and the hood. So I want to try to address that if I can. And I also want to do some interaction with the other front end pieces. So I have the lower valance, the rock guard, I have uh, the bracket assembly over here. You can't really see it, but I'll show all that for the hood latch. And I'll go over all the pieces that I have and show you how I'm going to put them on the car and we'll see how they interact with each other. So like I said, I have the lower valance, the rock guard or rock shield, however you want to label it, the hinges which came with the car, they seem to be in good shape so other than cleaning them up they should be fine. Also the assembly there for mounting or using the uh, hood latch and so that's a new new piece as well. And then I will be going through this box and this box holds the headlight buckets and all the various pieces that go with it. I've shown that before in the previous video and so you can uh, look at these pieces and parts here. There's the part numbers and again this is from Mustangs Unlimited. The uh, reinforcement plates I've already installed in the car. I did that in a previous video so just to give you an idea of what I'm working with. So I'm going to open up or pull out everything in that box and get it up on this table so we can have a look at it. As you can see, this kit comes with the new headlight bucket and ring, headlight ring. It also comes with the hardware kit. And I know some people have trouble putting these on. I'm not going to go into that detail today. So this is going to be set aside for the moment. But just so you know, that comes in the kit. Actually, two of them. So while I'm at this point, I want to show you something. This is one of the aftermarket pieces that came out of the box. This is an original Ford part from another project that I have. And you can see it says Fomico right on it, right there. So I know for a fact this is an original part. And there are a few little subtle differences, but for the most part, these pieces are interchangeable for the most part. I will point out that the Ford part has crisper lines up here in the the gills or louvers or whatever you want to call these. I know that kind of has a shark uh, gill look to it or whatever but 
the lines are crisper and on the aftermarket one it's a little more let's say soft so that's just one observation um, I know that the issue with the factory ones they've always had issues with these cracking and breaking and that's really not fixable not without doing some crazy modifications so that's just something that's pretty common this one maybe a little thicker in that corner and that could be a good thing it does have the same kind of you know perches and everything that the original would have um, of course this these are opposite sides you know this is left and right and the various things that have changed is like the headlight bucket here uh, for this side the adjuster is on the inside whereas on this one the adjuster will be on the outside so just just nothing just an observation so other than that I think they're very similar and we'll take care of the needs for most people again this isn't a concourse car this isn't going to a show as a factory original and I believe most cars aren't but just so you know little subtle differences now to start with the first thing that I want to do is make sure that all of the bolt holes that are pre-threaded in the fender that I can get a bolt in them because you know you start putting things together and you run into some complications and it just helps to make sure everything goes where it should that's what I'm talking about this one won't go in and I can look at it and see that the threads are kind of blocked a little bit by the edge of the uh, sheet metal for the fender so had I been trying to put this together with the bucket or extension or whatever you want to call it in place um, that would have been frustrating so at this point what I want to do since I recognize that is I'm going to take a little file and I'm going to open up that hole just a little bit so that the bolt can go in. Now when I say a file I'm talking about an air powered rotary file. You could use a hand file that's fine too but for my purposes I'm going to use air and I'm just going to kind of dress that edge out just a little bit so that the bolt can go in. This is the passenger side, and the same hole has the same problem. There you can see a little more how that is offset. So I'll take the file and I'll clean up this upper corner over here, and it'll take care of that as well. Okay, with those holes fixed, I want to take the bucket assembly and see how it fits the fender. Now, in this case, these fit like literally like they were made for these fenders so I can see a little bit of flex down here you know and it wants to pull a little bit at the top but the pins little guide pins right here there's two of those they line up with the holes that are in the fender and so that is a good thing same with the passenger side I'm really happy that these seem to fit the way they should 
And again, there's a little bit of a gap up here in the corner, but I don't think that's going to matter very much. As long as I'm making contact with the primary locations, I'm not going to stress over having this flat against the fender because it might put a load and lead to cracking. So I've got at least one, two, three points of contact that are really good and there's a little bit of a gap here. But again, the pins fit the fender holes, so that's a good thing. I can deal with this little bit of a gap and even if I have to shim it, it's not going to hurt anything. I'd rather do that than try to tweak this metal because, like I said, it'll crack. Okay, the plan is I'm just going to start piecing things together and instead of you hearing the rolling thunder that's coming through with the storm right now, this segment will have music. So, hopefully, you find it entertaining. As you can probably see, I was having some difficulty putting on the top piece or the rock guard, however you want to label that. And the reason for that, I believe, is if you look at the hole location in the fender, and hopefully there's enough light that you, know, you can see the hole. By doing a comparison of this to the other side, the way this is stamped together, or where, I mean uh, welded together, that hole is on kind of the edge of that lower section of the fender. I look at this side and you can see the hole is not on that edge for whatever reason and it should be over this direction some more. So by comparing this piece setting it up against and the edge from here to the hole same way here to the hole I can get a rough measurement and I'll have to relocate the hole in the fender. Not a big deal, just drill it and maybe even elongate this hole, I'm not sure just yet, but that has to be remedied. So what I did was I elongated the hole 
because I could not make a new hole that would not have interfered with that hole. Just made it easier to make this longer and I think that's going to take care of the problem. I can't say for sure, but I imagine it went exactly like that on the assembly line. No. <laughs> um, it's not too bad. You know, aftermarket parts, like I say, they're never going to fit exactly right. And this is, you know, pretty close. There's only so much you can do without cutting and re-welding and making things fit the car there is one more bolt that goes right there you can see the hole in the core support and that one so looking at it from this side you should be able to yeah you can see i can see the tab in there and same way over here uh yep so that's a good thing now, I want to fit the headlight buckets and start piecing some other things on and see how that looks. And this is why you mock everything in place. Never assume things are just going to fit. As you can see, hopefully see, that hole is just a little bit off. So I'll have to enlarge the hole in the headlight bucket slightly. And down here, that hole's way off. I don't know if I can get enough light in there to show you, but that's, that's way off. So I'll have to address that as well. Probably, probably have to enlarge that hole and just deal with it because there's nothing you can really modify beyond the headlight bucket. Same way here. This one, not quite as bad. Just a little bit of enlargement of the hole. But again, this one down here, hole's way off. So I'll take that rotary file and open up those holes and drive on. Okay. Things are fitting decent. I did have to modify a couple of the holes on this particular piece because it was binding and wanted to kind of tilt down. And that come, becomes critical when your measurement is off in this location because you don't want your grill opening to be angled or tilted. So to modify that, I actually opened up the little hole in the fender right here just a little bit because it was actually offset you know just a little bit anyway I really I just cleaned it up and then I had this same thing with the hole over here once I did that I also I think I elongated uh, this one just a little bit and of course I had to move the whole location of that hole all four of these bolts are tight right now and that actually fits pretty decent same way over here Everything is fitting decent. I, that's the hole I had to enlarge. 
but otherwise these all were pretty much where they needed to be and now the distance across is even between the rock guard and the bottom of the uh, grill piece so pretty happy with that I want to set the camera up and show you some issues that are going to be apparent between the extension and the fender. I also wanted to point out when I first did the video or the first segment of this video I talked about the headlight buckets and the hardware kit and I completely overlooked the fact that the hardware kit has the bolts and the clips and the screws that are needed to hold the extension on so that's a good thing I just had these bolts laying around so I'll swap those out and put in the bolts that actually belong to it just a matter of convenience and I'll drive on so I still need to install these clips in the in the uh, various locations where the headlight extension will mount and that'll help for me to show you the uh, fitment issues alright so I have the bolts that came with the kit in place and I want to set the extension up and as I mentioned in the previous video when I did a little teaser segment on uh, part 31 I mentioned how this one kinda has a I don't know kind of a fat spot right here that may come into play as I move forward but at this point I just want to put in the screws and try to lock this thing into place and then I want to see what fits and what doesn't so get the screws started alright so let's have a look at it and get an idea of what we're dealing with you can see here it's got a gap which is not good but there may be a quick way to fix that. Same way over here, it gets a gap. You can probably see some daylight through there. And again, that may be remedied just by taking off that little bit of a hump right there and allowing this to come back a little bit. Down here, fits pretty decent. Hopefully you have enough light there. So, not, not too bad. Um, this gap over here, the biggest part and like I said in the previous video you know there was some conflict with how these fit but I didn't have everything bolted on there's gonna be a fairly easy fix to this and if I can show you the little standoff down here that the screw goes through basically the back side of the um, extension let me, let me get a, a another the other extension and show you what I'm talking about Basically, this is the same hole. This is the top hole inboard coming from the driver's side. So, basically, I can take this standoff, as that would be called, and grind that down a little bit, and that's going to allow this to go in. So, the only thing that's really holding this from moving is the bottom side or the back side of this standoff. So, if I can try to zoom in there there that's all it really is and that that's going to be a fairly easy fix I think a little bit of tuning on this and this is going to be really close to fitting this this part of the fender okay now what I don't like is that big lump and the original design there's kind of a little recess right here you can just barely see the shadow of it and that's that's how they were from the factory but the fenders maybe were a little uh, maybe had a little bit better shape so as I look at this and I'm kind of playing with ideas as to what might work or what I will probably do I look at this and I say okay the fender is kind of it kind of gets fat right here. You can see the crease and then it just kind of eh, fattens out. I think what I'm going to do is make a cut. 
right here and allow this piece to drop down and this side to curve in. I'll remove any excess metal that's in the middle there and just weld that back together and maybe help define that crease just a little bit and try to get everything to join together at the same location. It's still going to take a little bit of filler you know, to dress this up and make it look really sharp but I think by doing this I'm going to obviously reduce a whole lot of filler and maybe clean up the shape of this fender a little bit. As I look here on the side you know maybe see how my finger is traveling there it gaps. So I may have to look at that as well see if I can't bring this fender out a little bit. As I've shown before I'm not afraid to drill out a spot weld and reshape things just a little to try to make it better. But this is pretty minor overall. I mean, it's uh, maybe I can show it from the other side. It's probably going to look worse here, but it's really not that much. It's, it's going to be fixable. So, just part of the process. I guess I better show you the driver's side as well. Similar problems. The peak is not where it needs to be. And this is actually bulged out a bit more on this side. It looks better down here. And up here, it's a little high. So some of that has to do with just the hole that the nut plate is uh, on or in. And so maybe moving that hole down just a little bit will allow this to shift just a little bit because there's not much that you're going to be able to do with that top part. You know, you can change that drop, but there's only so much room we have to, to play with. Otherwise, it's good right there. But again, I'll probably do the same thing. Slice the top of the fender, work this in, work this down, weld it, and that'll be it. Now just to show you I started with the basics. As I said, I shortened up this standoff a little bit and I also knocked off that little lump that was there. And just in doing that, it's much closer. This gap is virtually gone and it fits closer on the top here. I still have the height problem, but now the transition is much better this way. So as you can see, I've marked the high metal, I put an H, H, and then I wrote low and low because this is two different planes. Um, and this is not one piece, so you have to kind of work it in. And I'm, I'll figure that out when I get to that, and I'll show you what I do. But at this point, this looks pretty good. Looks a lot better than it did anyway. I want to show you a couple of things I have in mind. I was thinking about this last night after I stopped working, and I want to try to make this as simple as I can for you, the viewers, but also for the process because you shouldn't have to cut things apart, you know, and redesign sheet metal. Even though I'm still going to do some cutting and modifying, what I did on the back side of this extension at the bottom, I found that it was rubbing on the uh, structure that holds it, the bucket or door or whatever you want to call it. So by removing a little bit of material here that took care of a little bit of the gap here and like I said I'd taken off some of the surface on the top here and that tightened up the top as well so at this point I've got it to fit a lot better but there's still issues with how this is aligning and even up here this I've managed to get this a little bit closer I'm probably still gonna do some cutting and modifying but the less I have to do the better and obviously not everybody's going to want to do the stuff that I'm going to do some people would just build this up with filler and there will be some filler involved I will say that this is not going to be a perfect fit I'm just trying to reduce the amount of filler that's going to be on the sides and everything so I will play with this a little bit and we'll see what happens
I'm not sure if you can see all that, but I've created some space. That'll be good. That'll help me get that down. This upper section I'm not sure about because it may be hitting the internal bucket. So I may have to just kind of massage that down with a body hammer. But that's going to help tighten that up right there. And then I can flex this out by putting these relief cuts here and of course cutting that one. This allows me to remove these things and of course along with that opening up these spot welds. So, let's see. Delete that just a little bit, but every little bit counts in this case. So, if you can see exactly what I'm doing, but just taking a screwdriver and get in this hole right here. Let me try a bigger one. Like I said, it may not be much, but I can move this out. And these are the low points. Here's another way that I can manipulate this. I can put this bolt in. There is a relief cut around the bolt. I can take a screwdriver, use the bolt as a leverage point, and you can see how much I can move that. So if I bring this out, collapses this gap just a little bit which allows these two sections which are low to come out and this I can then press down. Hopefully you can see that. Now what I might do, I haven't decided, I might I might drill out that spot weld too just to give it a little more relief. Alright so I know it's hard to show you all this but that is a self-tapping sheet metal screw and what I did is I applied pressure on this bolt put the screw in and now things are a little more stationary give me a point that I can you know hold something in place so if I set the extension up and I'm lined up on the edge over here now this is very close and I can press this in. I don't know if you can see that, but let me zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> with that, again, with that in place, you can see how much metal is sticking out right there. I can press that down, and that really changes the dynamics. So really the hardest part right now is going to be addressing this little bit that's sticking up. And I may, again, may have to massage that from the top and see if I just can't. I may have to make a relief cut this way so that it has somewhere to go because if it's, if it's hitting, I don't know. Let me see what I can come up with. Okay, y'all know I go a little over at the top when I do this stuff. <laughs> what I did is I cut through this top edge right here, and by doing that I could cut away some of the material from the inner structure, and that way I could manipulate this down. So that has happened. I've took a body hammer, and uh, I've taken a body hammer, and tapped down this top corner right here, and now that is much much better and let me see if I can show you if I take the extension set it in place lined up now you can see there's hardly any material here at the top and this would be better once I get it actually bolted up but by pressing that down and I weld that all together it's going to take just a little bit of filler to shape this to do the smooth transition onto this piece up here or to the extension so that's going to be great um, I'm happy with that that's going to be a huge improvement over that big fat shoulder that was sticking out 
So again, at this point, I'm going to tack all this together, and I'll set the uh, bucket in place, and then refit the extension and verify that it's what I like, and then fully weld it. So it's going to take a little bit of time for me to get this all set up and in place, but big improvement. There's the end result after grinding down the welds. And I did this section over here like I talked about. I just cut a relief cut then welded it back and ground it. And I think it's going to work. So let me get the extension in place and show you how it looks. There it is installed. I think that turned out pretty nice. And if it if it takes any filler, it'll be very minimal to try to make that transition. The rest of the way across fits nice. Uh, I may adjust this side just a little bit more. May or may not. I haven't decided yet because it's fitting very well. Other than that, the only thing I can see being an issue, and this is, again, I reduced the drop, let's say, from the extension to the fender by modifying you know the shape so there's just a little bit of an edge right there and what I found is that the extension itself it's extra thick right here so I may be able to just blend the extension just a little bit to help with that and still maybe just a little bit of filler because the fender right here even before I did any transitional changes it's not a very smooth curve it's a little bit lumpy and so it's going to need something regardless but either way this is much much better and as I like to say I'm happy with that just to give you an idea of what I was referring to this is the part that I said was thicker and this is 220 thousandths thick this factory piece is 80 thousandths. Big difference, but I can manipulate this some. You know, I can blend that a little thinner and help with the shape and the transition to the fender. So that's a good thing. So this will be the end of this video. 
I still have the driver's side to do, but I'm not going to film all that. It's not necessary. It's basically the same thing as what I've done over here. I hope this was informative. I know it's probably a bit further than most people want to go, but for me, I like to have things fit as close as I can and go on from there. So it's still going to take a little bit of filler, like I said, and I may do some blending, like I said, on this outer portion. But beyond that, it's not going to take much to make it look right or look even better than it does. Hopefully you don't have to go to this extent. If you have factory fenders or factory pieces, they're going to fit better, but they still didn't fit well. You can look at any kind of photos of a factory car, or I've seen pictures online of different websites, and unless somebody has gone to this extent or done a bunch of filler work, the factory stuff just kind of looks funky. So, it is what it is. Another thing I wanted to mention, I've recently become an Amazon influencer, associate, affiliate, whatever the word may be, and I'm going to post a link to my storefront for Amazon and on that storefront I'm trying to list products that I use and it could be anything from body filler to gloves to tape whatever products that I use that are available on Amazon I've also been adding links to various other videos and those links may be directly associated to those products as well so if you're interested have a look at the channel or have a look at the storefront and if you want to order something that's great if you do I get a little bit of revenue out of it and it doesn't affect the price of the product at all so keep that in mind as well even if you just go through my storefront and you decide to look for something else that still helps me out because I get a little kickback or whatever because you went through my store so just keep that in mind if you're interested and if not that's fine too just let you know um, I'm not sure what the next video is going to be as I said I still have the other side to finish and I will do some more fine-tuning of a little bit of the sheet metal here and there, but really nothing major. I think this is the last big hurdle that I had to get through to take care of the body. So um, you may have noticed I did not install the hinges. One of the hinges was bent, and so I'm working on either straightening it out or I'm going to have to get new ones. Hopefully I can get that one straight and get it working because I'd like it. It's a... Those are, appear to be factory hinges, so I'd like to save those. So that's why I did not put the hinges on or the, or the hood. Um, beyond that, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for watching and helping this channel grow. Um, recently, I've gone over 25,000 subscribers. In fact, I think it's 25, close to 3 right now. And normally I do giveaways at certain increments. And my last giveaway was at 20,000. And I had said at that time, I probably won't do 25, that I will do one at 30. So stay tuned for that. When that number gets there, I will. I have something in mind, and I'm not going to say what it is, but I have something in mind that I'm going to make, I think, and then do a giveaway of that item. So anyway, that's to come in the future. So if you would, please give me a like, leave a comment, share the video, help build the channel. And I would like to continue to make this grow so that I can honestly quit my day job. <laughs> I would like to do this more uh, as a full-time thing. And part of that is having a channel big enough to where it feeds itself. Um, the other thing is I've got that other channel going, Joe Daddy's Workshop. Check it out if you like. It's got some stuff on there that you might find interesting that isn't car related. So just an idea. I hope you have a good weekend. And until next time, take care of yourselves. So this will be the end of this video. I still have the driver's side to do, but I'm not going to make a video extension of all that. No. Come on. So there.